Hey guys, Malcolm here at Survival Know How, and today I'm doing a bug out bag field test. So what this is not gonna be is just me kinda going through what's in my bag, right? I've already got a video about that I uploaded a while ago. I'll have a link to it around here. It might be a little outdated, right? I've made a lot of changes to my bag since then. Uh, actually, a lot of good feedback from the community on YouTube, and I've made some changes, changed out some gear. So now I'm just kinda going out and I'm gonna use this gear, right? I'm gonna spend the night out here. I'm gonna use my shelter system, use my water purification system. I uh, use my bag and just see where I can make improvements, what works, what doesn't work, what, uh, what I need to throw away, what I need to make improvements on, what I need to add to my bag, you know. So I'm just kind of field testing it and seeing uh, how, how everything fits together. So the first thing I need to do is find a good place to set up my camp. Now a lot of people when they set up their camps, they go for a big open space, a lot of room. And that's not what you want to do in a bug out situation. Really you want to find some place that's very dense and provides you with some concealment. Now, to kind of add to the excitement, I really don't know whose property I'm on right now. So I actually really do want to conceal my campsite and I don't want to uh, be in an open space where somebody can just be wandering by and see my campsite. So my goal is to find a place that's very dense with trees and will provide me with some level of concealment. So where I'm at right now, I'm finding a lot of these holly trees. And that's not necessarily a bad tree, but what I really want is pine trees. So I'm gonna keep looking and see if I can find some place where there's a big concentration of pine trees to set up my base camp. is cooking in the cauldron there's a freight train passing by all right so i'm starting to find more pine trees here starting to get mixed in with these holly trees it's great this is exactly what i'm looking for nearby the leaves are shimmering and they rustle in the breeze blowing smoke upon our faces guitars on our knees like a message from the mountain saying now here we are around this campfire beneath these stars all right so now that i found a good campsite it's time to uh, pull out the slr and i can put away my gopro for now all right, so I think this spot will work pretty well for my hammock setup. I got a pine tree right behind me, and I got another one here, which I can string up my hammock, and then I figure I'll put a nice little fire here with the firewall, and uh, this should be a pretty good setup. And as far as concealment goes, you know, it's pretty good. I can probably only see maybe 40 feet in that direction, maybe 30 feet in that direction, 20 feet that direction, maybe 30 feet, you know. So uh, as far as concealment goes, this is not a bad spot at all. So the reason I was looking for a pine tree specifically is just because, uh, as far as I know, this is one of the best trees to have around in a survival situation. There is just a tremendous amount that you can do with a pine tree. So let me know what you guys think about this, but if I had to choose one type of forest and only had one tree for me to be stranded in, it would be a pine forest, right? Uh, so we all know about fat wood, of course, but you know you can actually skim away the outer bark and eat the inner bark of the pine tree. You know that the sap can use be used uh, as like an antiseptic on wounds. You know the sap can be used to make glue. The pine needles are great for insulation if you're building a, um, you know, some kind of primitive shelter. There's a, a bunch of use, good uses for the pine tree. Uh, so this is just kind of the tree that I'm most familiar with. We have a lot of them in my area. And if I had to choose a bug out location, it would be in a pine forest.
right guys, so I pretty much got my shelf there up. That's pretty much how it'll be tonight. I might make some uh, small adjustments with the uh, fly, uh, but that's pretty much it. And uh, so far, you know, so good. I, I'm, I'm impressed with that. It's very easy to set up, it's quick. And all of that, so it's super lightweight. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow after sleeping through it. So I'm not planning on having a big fire, but I do want to have some sort of fire uh, underneath my tarp. Just something pretty small. Maybe I can boil some water on, help me keep warm at night. But it's very dry where I'm at right now. Uh, a lot of leaves, a lot of pine needles on the ground. So I'm gonna try to dig down before I create my fire. So that means I gotta create a digging stick. All right, guys, so nothing too fancy, right? It's just uh, whittled down to a flat point like this just to help me dig a quick hole. Um, you know, again, nothing fancy. The sun's about to set. I only got maybe an hour or so of good daylight left. So I'm um, kind of in a rush to get this, this fire pit going. So it's nothing fancy, but this little stick uh, really comes in handy, uh, really for prying up the dirt. And I guess you know you still got to use your hands to actually get it out there, but it makes it a hell of a lot easier to break it up a bit. So when you're looking for firewood or really wood for any kind of project, you want what's called dead standing. So this is limbs and trees that have died and fallen over, but get stuck on something uh, and don't actually hit the ground. All right? If you find wood that's laying on the ground. That means it's just absorbing the moisture and it's just rotting as we rotten wood. Something like this is just up here drying out, okay? So dead standing wood like this makes excellent tinder and firewood and excellent wood for any other kind of projects that you're looking for. Pine cones also make an excellent source of tinder. So this is yet again one of the many uh, survival benefits of pine trees. So guys, I have one item in my bag that, for whatever reason, is just my favorite item. Um, I really enjoy having it. It's not the most practical item, it's not the most necessary item. I, I guess it's kind of a luxury item. It's just my favorite item in here. And that is this little crank radio. Uh, so it's not only a crank, radio but it's also a flashlight so it has some functional purpose to it as well but it's a little crank radio as well as uh, you can charge it with the solar panel on top and it's just a really nice luxury thing to have when you're out here you know sometimes just listening to some jams uh, is really uh, can really relax you uh, however I made one mistake and that is that I should have taken this out earlier because the Sun is now setting and I am really not going to be able to use the solar charger function of it, so I'm going to have to crank this up all night to use it. But I am going to leave it out right now in the few remaining spots of sunlight that we have, and it can prop it up at an angle, and uh, I'll see what kind of juice I can, I can still milk out of the sun tonight. So if you guys remember earlier, I was talking about how the pine tree is just my favorite tree, uh, just because of all the uses that you can get out of it in a survival situation, and one of them is that you can actually eat the bark of the pine tree. Uh, so I'm going to just quickly demonstrate that for you real quick. So, uh, this is not what you eat, okay? This is absolutely not what you eat. This stuff uh, looks terrible. What you need to do is kind of dig down a bit and get to the white inner bark of the pine tree, right? It'll be kind of moist, it'll be very pliable. Um, and you know, as far as taste go, it's definitely not good, but it, it's not terrible either. It tastes, tastes like pine salt. If you're drinking a thing of pine saw, it's very hard to get through. But uh, let me let me kind of whack away at this a little bit and expose some of it, and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the inner bark right here. So you want to get the outer bark off of it, uh, but since the inner bark is pliable, you know all you really have to do is just kind of bend it like that, and this outer bark should peel off peel right off into these little chunks. Alright, so when you're done, this is what you're left with. Uh, just this white inner bark. 
of the pine tree. Now you can boil this, you can fry this, and it tastes a little bit better, or you can just chew on it. Uh, so I think I'll just rip it a piece off, and I'll just chew on it for a little bit. Very strong. Not a bad taste, it's just very, very strong. But you know what, man? If you're really in a survival situation, this is calories right here. And, you know, matter or not them. So, I, I don't know how true this is, but I, I've heard before that, you know, when you expose a tree like this, if you just leave it, then it leaves the tree vulnerable to bacterial infections, and the tree can get sick and die, just like, you know, a person can. Uh, and so I've heard that it's best to take mud and actually cover this up, and that'll help protect the tree until it can grow its bark back. I don't know if it's really true or not, but you know, I, it's just a habit that I picked up a while ago. So I'm gonna get some bark. Sorry, I'm gonna get some mud. I'm gonna cover up this little hole, and hopefully it'll help this tree uh, keep living for a little bit longer. I don't know how much of a difference it's actually gonna make, but it's a habit that I picked up a while ago. Um, if you guys have heard this before, you know, let me know down in the comments whether you think it actually makes a difference or not. So I just found a shortcoming in my bag, which is exactly why I'm out here doing that. And that is that I don't have a good way of hanging a pot over uh, a fire, right? I have a, a pot, but it doesn't have, uh, there's no way for me to hang it above the fire. I actually have to stick it in the fire, which is not really ideal, right? I really love a metal pot or even a metal thermos that I could hang above the, the fire. Um, now I have I have this Katadyne water filter which I use for water purification. But man, I'd really love it if this was actually a metal uh, bottle that I could actually take the bottle and hang it above the fire. Uh, you know, since that is just plastic. So you know, that's why I'm out here doing this to find these little flaws within my bag. So that's something I'm gonna have to look into uh, and see if I can add a a metal thermos or a pot or something that I can hang above a fire. All right, so it's about dinner time. Uh, for dinner, we have boiled uh, pine bark. Give that a try. Uh, we also have some pine tea. Uh, and top it all off, we have MRE. Thank God, right? Uh, we have vegetable lasagna. Probably not my favorite, but it's gotta be better than boiled tree bark. But uh, I'm definitely curious to see if this is uh, much better than eating it raw? Uh, answer is no. Nope. Maybe it's a little bit more edible, right? I can chew through it a little bit easier. All right. Maybe it's not quite as strong as eating it raw, but it's still pretty goddamn strong. Yeah, not one of my favorite things. But some pine tea uh, doesn't sound bad. And you can see that golden color to it. And that's actually not bad. You know, I've made um, pine needle tea before. I've never made tea out of the bark, but you can see it's got a real nice golden uh, shine to it. And it's actually, it's that's not bad at all. I'd definitely drink that again.
So it's starting to get dark here. Um, you know, after it gets dark, there's not going to be a whole lot left that I can do. Uh, there's really nothing left that I really need to do. You know, I'm pretty comfortable right now. Uh, I could build a firewall, but you know, there's really no point. It's not even much of a point of me having this fire right now. It's not. I'm not it's not going to get that cold out tonight. I'm not cooking anything over it. It's really just a psychological thing, I guess, having a fire going, and it's just kind of kind of fun to to build a fire. But I'm gonna get my my headlamp out here pretty shortly, um, and I'll probably just uh, I got my SAS survival guide. I probably just kind of skim through that until until I get tired and I'm ready for bed. So if you guys watch my video, uh, what's in my bug out bag, now remember, I have a lot of these Ziploc uh, bags included in my bug out bag, right? There's tons of uses for them from um, carrying water to storing food. Uh, you could even put water in there and probably twist it up and try to create a magnifying glass, you know, try to create a fire that way. Um, there's a lot of uses for Ziploc bags. And, you know, I just found another one, you know, storing all my trash from this MRE. So that way, hopefully, I don't have any critters come around this night, coming around tonight, you know, smelling my trash and waking me up in the middle of the night. So there you go, guys. Uh, Ziploc bags. Don't forget to add those to your bug out bag. It's okay. My great grandfather was a refugee from a place called Ireland. He didn't want to leave home, but when you're a slave, nothing goes how you might have planned. Like most of the island, he had nothing to eat. He survived by going away. But if he hadn't starved and if he hadn't left, perhaps he would have lived to see the day. When after centuries of subjugation under English queens and kings came the movement of the Irish Spring. When things were set in motion around one Easter morning to move from colony to nation. When through the foggy dew could be seen lines of marching men heading towards a country's liberation. Then a century ago, on April 24th, suddenly one day the spell was broken. For six days and nights, all across the island, the spirit of resistance had spoken. Quickly it was clear, even the deaf could hear, the sounds of two armies battling, and the bullets of the Irish Spring. Buildings lay in ruins when the rebels had surrendered. A battle lost, a war only begun. Chains once thrown off don't go back on easily and soon the British army was on the run. The Doyle convened and declared the Republic a nation among the others on the earth. A nation with a people with a culture and a history celebrated from Liverpool to Perth. A nation with a memory that's in the songs it sings with the music of the Irish Spring. The revolution left unfinished, you can hear many people say, on the streets of Derry and Belfast. But in all 32 counties you'll hear many people talking of the struggles and the martyrs of the past. Of those who dared stand up and teach us through example what it means to sacrifice it all. Of those who demonstrated if they believe that they are free, only then can they possibly stand tall. Of Connolly and Pierce and all those who gave their lives that they might hear the bells of freedom ring with the rising of the Irish Spring. So since this, this is a field test in my bug out bag, I figured I'd spend some time giving an after action report and just kind of evaluating what worked and what did not work in my bug out bag. Um, so let's jump right in. We'll start with what did work. Uh, 
so the bag itself, right? This bag totally worked. I really enjoy this bag. It's got this one feature where it opens up like this, so you have access to everything, everything, everything on the bottom, everything on top. Full access to everything in your main compartment. I really like this a lot. This is this bags from uh, SOC, is the name of the company. Uh, so what else works? The rain fly that I have, right? I've got this hex fly by Hennessy Hammock. This totally worked. I really enjoyed this. Really simple to set up. Um, uh, I got no complaints about this. This totally worked. I have a ENO hammock. This did not work. This was a total fail. Um, this is just a cheap nylon hammock. It's one of the cheaper ones you can get. I think it's about sixty dollars. Uh, it failed for me for two reasons. One, this thing is just paper, paper thin. Right? There is no insulation to this whatsoever. This is part of the reason why it's freezing my ass off last night. Now they make um, they make insulators that you can buy for your hammock. Or you can just buy, you know, a thicker hammock. You can buy, buy a wool blanket to lay down. Um, I gotta figure something out. This this definitely does not work. Um, so I'm gonna definitely look into buying a thicker hammock to use. Also, you know, I'm six foot two, and I feel like I'm right at the maximum height for this thing. Uh, you know, when I'm fully stretched out, like my head is you know at one end and my feet are at the other end uh, it, it just wasn't wasn't long enough for me I wish it was a little bit longer it'd be a little bit more comfortable so I gotta find a longer hammock and I gotta find a thicker hammock as well um, but what did work was these ENO straps <clears throat> so these are the hammock straps that I used um, and when I first had the hammock I used to tie it up around trees with uh, just 550 cord Fuck, I left my 550 cord out there. God damn it. Well, maybe I'll go back another day and get it. Alright, so these straps totally worked. Uh, they are really simple to throw up around a, a tree. Um, they have a couple of different adjustments, a couple of different like levels that you can uh, strap your hammock into. Uh, in the middle of the night, I actually woke up and I adjusted them. One of them was just too high and also the hammock wasn't tight enough. So in the middle of the night, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, I got up and I was able to adjust these things really, really easy. Uh, so these, these, you know, um, hammock straps, I, I really enjoy these. These worked out really well. Uh, this is my sleeping bag. This is just, uh, I got this from the military years ago. It's, it's one of those two-part bags that you have one bag that goes inside the other one, and I only brought one part uh, because I was trying to save on space. Um, that totally didn't didn't pan out for me. Uh, I, I would like to see if I can buy um, another sleeping bag that I can use for my bug out bag that will save space because th this does take up a good bit of space. Um, so so the, two of those things. All right. So another thing that did not work out very well for me was my cooking set, right? And that's this here. Um, so my pot set, it, it's pretty fancy, right? It's got two cups, two bowls, another pot in there. It's got a couple sporks, you know, real fancy. But what it doesn't have is a way to hang this uh, above the fire to boil water. And what I ended up doing was just sticking the entire pot uh, in the fire to boil water, uh, which worked. But, you know, I'm using mostly pine trees as firewood, and I got sap just all over the bottom of this pot, uh, which is a real pain in the ass. Like, I do not want to get sap all over the rest of my gear. Um, so that definitely did not work. I need to figure out a way uh, Maybe I can drill some holes in the side of this pot and then get some metal wires to suspend it. Uh, I gotta figure something out that I can easily boil water. Now I know I can just buy a canteen, but the issue with that is that, well, it's not really an issue, but I've got this water bottle from Catadyne that I carry and it's got a charcoal filter uh, into it. So I, I don't know, I'm a little hesitant about carrying this as well as carrying a metal canteen. 
We'll see. I gotta figure something out with that though. Um, what did work out though is these plastic bags, right? Uh, silly little Ziploc bags. Um, after I ate my dinner, I was able to throw all my trash in this bag and seal it up so I don't have any critters crawling around my campsite in the middle of the night. Um, and then this morning, I was actually able to use this trash bag to cover up uh, the tree sap that's covering my, my cooking set here. So this, this uh, Ziploc bags, these, these totally work. They've got a million and one uses. You should definitely have a whole bunch of those Ziploc bags in your bug out bag. So another thing that did not work was uh, my MRE. Now, it, it technically works, but I, I just, I think I can do better than that. Um, so an MRE, they take up a lot of space, for one thing. Another thing is, you know, it, it, it's an unopened one. You really don't know what you're getting in there. Uh, it's just kind of a crapshoot of what you're gonna get. Uh, another thing, so they've got the, uh, the self-cooking mechanism in here. Right, you just add a little water, and there's a chemical reaction, and it, it cooks your food for you, which is great. But it produces a lot of trash. Like, I didn't even want to use that last night just because of how much trash it produces. Um, so, these things produce a lot of trash, they take up a lot of space, and you don't really know what you're getting in them. Uh, I think I can do better. I think I'd prefer actually knowing what food I have in my bag. Maybe I can keep them all in Ziploc bags or something instead of carrying around an MRE. So I don't think I'm gonna carry these around anymore. I'm gonna keep these just at my house or in case I, I need a plug in. So something else that really uh, kind of failed last night is I got this fire starter from Instafire. Um, so, it, it failed for two reasons. One, so it says it lights up to four fires. It, so this is kind of like a powder that's really flammable. Uh, it says it can light up to four fires, but it, it's just all in a big bag like this, uh, and it's not a resealable bag. So you have to kind of measure out one quarter of this bag, and then you have to find a way to seal this bag up with, you know, paper clip or something. Like it, it just doesn't make much sense to really use this for camping. Um, and I ended up using the entire bag, and man, I threw so many sparks on this stuff, and nothing. Uh, now, as soon as I put a flame to it from a match, sure, it lit just fine. But for my purposes, uh, I really want to find a fire starter. I, I have fire starters. So I really want to use a fire starter that. Uh, I can use my ferrocesium rod with, and that uh, I can, has multiple uses in it, right? This I use it once and then the bag's open. I, I'd rather have something that I have a lot of small fire starters with. So as far as fire starters go, I'm not wild about this instant fire, fire starter thing. Uh, really just because you need a flame, right? You can't just use sparks to start this stuff. So that, that is a fail. Last thing uh, I'm gonna review is my knife. So I've got a lot of knives. Um, I get a lot of expensive knives, but for some reason, man, I just really enjoy these Mora knives. They are just super comfortable in my hand. So this is the Mora Black. Um, and only thing special about this really is it's got a, a sharpening stone there and it's got a, a ferro rod here as well. And Mora knives are, are pretty cheap, man. They're, as far as knives go, they're pretty expensive. I think, like, the base model is, like, 20 bucks. Um, I think this one's $60. But, man, I, I just really enjoy these knives. I, I don't know if it's the ergonomic rubber grip that I like so much or, or what, but it's just a very solid knife. It's very comfortable to use in your hands. And even though I have, I, man, I've got, I don't know, like, 10 knives are all around $100 a piece. I just always come back to this Mora knife. So I, I'm really impressed with this knife. Uh, it worked out just fine for me last night. And man, it, it's, just, it's just kind of turned into my go-to knife. And then one more kind of general comment about my bag is, uh, it, it, it's pretty heavy. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's got some weight to it. I really need to go in there and work on reducing the weight. I was kind of thinking about different ways that I could do that last night. You know, like, for example, I've got uh, these yo-yo reels, right? 
And these things are great for, for fishing, great for setting up snares and a, a few other things. Uh, you know, I ordered a whole box off the internet and I just stuck a whole box in there and I, I don't really need an entire box. So, right, I could probably cut this down to half or even less of these yo-yo reels. Um, I, I've got other things in there. I've got, uh, I've got candles. I don't really know why I have candles in there. I was, I was thinking more along the lines of if I'm in an urban environment, then maybe having a candle would come in handy, you know, if I'm stuck in a car or something. But I, I've got a bunch of candles. I, I want to throw, take those out of the bag. Uh, maybe I'll leave one or two. And there's a few other things. Like, I, I really need to reduce the weight in this bag. It, it's, it's just not practical how heavy it is. Alright guys, so I think that about does it for this video. Um, I actually had a really nice time out here last night. It was nice just to get away from everything. Uh, you know, I've got a nine month old baby at the house uh, and he's, he's a real handful. So I haven't had much of a chance to get out into the wild uh, in the last nine months. Even just to come out tonight, I really had a, a plea with my wife. In exchange for me coming out tonight, uh, today I need to go on baby duty all day to give her a break so she can go off and do her stuff. So I think I learned a lot about my bug out bag on this trip. Um, I definitely have a lot of room for improvement. Some things work, some things didn't work. Uh, I should be making some revisions about this bag. And hopefully, you know, sometime in the next few months I can uh, upload a new video about my updated bag. Because I have made a lot of changes actually since I uploaded my original bug out bag video. Uh, which is probably about a year ago now. Uh, and I actually got a lot of good feedback from the YouTube community about what to put in my bag. Uh, from uploading that video. So I'll probably I'll make an updated video once I make some changes uh, to my bag. Uh, if you guys have bug out bags and you've never gone out and done this, man, I highly recommend it. You know, um, everything's all theory until you actually go out there and try it. You don't really know how things are going to work out until you get hands on with them. Uh, so if you have a bug out bag, man, I highly recommend that you guys take it out and try it and see what works and what does not work.